Peggy Farron and we are live with the Understand Photography Show where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode 41. Um, if you are watching this live on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash understand photography. But if you miss the live show, we also put this on YouTube and it's a podcast on iTunes. So just do a search under the Understand Photography Show and you'll find us pretty easily. Our next four weeks to proficiency in photography class starts on July 8th, and that is a four-week class that will give you a really strong foundation in photography. Now, I got a little freebie to, to see if you like my teaching style, because our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical. I'm not a technical person, and so I teach in a very non-technical way. I have a 45-minute free video that's called How to Get a Solid Photography Education in Just Four Weeks, and it is going to teach you some basics, and it's also going to talk about what we teach in the four weeks class. That link will be in the show notes on understandphotography.com, so make sure that you check out understandphotography.com for the show notes after this episode. Our new Lightroom class is also on sale. That's on sale through June, and it is such a ridiculously cheap price that I'm not going to tell you you have to go on the website to look because this, YouTube, this video is going to be on YouTube for a long time. I don't want anybody to know how cheap it is. <laughs> but Joe Fitzpatrick has been teaching this class in our studio in Naples for many years, and so he's adapted it as an online class. This is designed for super busy people who don't have time to take full-length classes. It's 29 very short videos, like two to five minutes each, where he teaches a little bit at a time. And then it's nice, too, because if you forget something, it's easy to go back and see what you missed because the title of the video is what the video is about. So check that out on understandphotography.com. And remember, the sale ends on June 30th, absolutely. So my guest on Today's Understand Photography show is the fabulous and well-renowned photographer, teacher, and artist, Jeremiah Jenner. I've known Jeremiah for a long time on Facebook <laughs> and finally got to meet him face-to-face -to -face today. Jeremiah is a certified photography and Photoshop instructor for Broward County Schools and for the Art Center South Florida. He owns JMI Photographic Services in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where he instructs, instructs studio lighting classes, private photography workshops, and more. He's also a fine art photographer. He, um, he has limited editions that are popular in the media, as well as a lot of serious art collectors have his work. He's got national collectors, including the Holiday Inn Corporation, Starbucks, Bucks, PBS, and the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Whew, that was a big introduction, so welcome, Jeremiah. <laughs> well, thank you, Peggy. Glad to be here. I'm Jeremiah Jenner from uh, JMJ Photographic Services. I'm also a photography instructor for Broward County Schools for almost 10 years now, so it's really fortuitous to be here. Nice to meet you live in person as what well. What did I say, JMI? JMJ. JMJ. Close enough. I, I J K. You know, that's cool. <laughs> Jeremiah JMJ. Jeremiah Matthias Jenner. Jeremiah Matthias No pressure. Jenner. Yes. Wow, you got some names going on. Yeah. Oh, we got a little interference on the outside. I got the, you know, middle <laughs> Michelle. So now, yes. are you from Florida all your life? Since 83. I came down in spring, spring break from uh, high school and got my fitness in and never turned back. Oh, my, same with me. I got here and before that. I'm yeah. older than you, I guess. <laughs> uh, you look marvelous, darling. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So, um, how did you get into photography? Let's see. My parents gave me, my mom gave me a little... Kodak uh, 126 camera with little square negatives on it and remember the square flash bulbs and oh, those yeah. Are, yeah my mom gave me a, a camera a set of drums and some paints when I was five my parents are artists a cool oh. hippie artist so I know inevitably I will be in, in some sort of art field over there and my, are they still up north uh, my my parents up north yep where are you from uh, Rochester New York home oh, of Rochester. Kodak oh, oh wow I spent many times as a kid going to the Kodak uh, factory which is no more sad yeah, to say but. I know. Yeah. A lot of time watching them build cameras, make the you know the raw plastic into film, just cameras, and there's like a whole big plant over there. It was pretty awesome. That is cool. Yes. I'm from Detroit. We went to the car factories. <laughs> yeah. So again, you know, uh, being around my parents, being an artist, you know, inevitable, I you know, find something artsy to do. My very first shot was on kindergarten, the first day of uh, winter time, and I took the one camera, maybe three or four feet of snow out there, icy morning, like the purples and the golds and the reds, the sun rises on the hill. I was taking pictures of the camera watching the ice and the sun sparkle on the ice on the, on the tree and the 
bus pulls up, school bus, and I'm like, I'm taking pictures. I'm skipping school today. So my priorities are kept in the light versus school. Did you really skip yeah. school at that yeah. age? Yeah, five years old, I'm like, I got pictures wow, to do, guys. The good thing you had hippie parents. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the light's calling me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create today. I saw that very first photograph, you know, I took from, you know, 50 years ago, maybe. So did you go to college to become a photo photographer? Uh, sort of. How did you get into photography? I've always been in photography. You know, I've always done, you know, pictures of friends and stuff. And um, I went to college at FIT in Jensen Beach in the 80s. I took some photography classes at some dark room, you know, back in the film days. Yeah. And a little more technical aspects. Most I pretty much learned on my own. I uh, you know, take the cameras, taking courses. I follow all the photographers to learn stuff. My students are great for learning stuff, too. They have a great idea. Say, Jeremiah, try this, or Jeremiah, try that. So I'm always to incorporate in their ideas as well. When I do classes, it's not my class. It's our class. We're here to learn together as a team and become awesome. better photographers. So now, do you, did you work full-time as a photographer before you got into teaching? Or? I've had a lot of corporate jobs. Oh, really? <laughs> I have a name for a pull of tags, yes. And I'm not one for the corporate world. I prefer to be independent and you know, uh, work better. So how long way. have you been teaching at Broward? Uh, nine years. Wow. 2009 I started. Now what does it mean to be a certified photography instructor? I actually have my teaching certificate through Broward County School, so I'm a certified. I go, you know, my, my credentials, my college credits, and actually show I'm a working photographer. And I finally got certified through the school board of Broward County, so I have a little teaching certificate, which kind of sets me apart from the competitors yeah. over on the South Coast there. Okay. Yeah, so that's great. And that's a full-time job? or That's a nighttime job, primarily Broward Community Schools, offshoot Broward County Schools. Adult education classes are Monday. Wednesday and Thursday, 6 to 9 p.m. at Broward Schools, different locations. Okay. And Tuesdays are my private classes, and I do events on weekends, and also I do private classes and workshops such as splash photography, portrait lighting photography, and Photoshop classes on the weekends, so those different classes throughout the year. Now, we did the splat, what you call splash yeah. photography. We did a little bit about, of that, but we don't do it too often because the setup is so intense because, I don't know, you've got a bigger studio than I do, I know, but... Uh, you know, with the I saw your your uh, ad or whatever yeah. for it, where you have the aquarium and yeah. you throw things in and you teach them. I assume you teach them lighting. Right, correct. And uh, as because that's what I taught here at Artist Naples one year, and I call it abstract photography mm. class because we do that plus the water drop photography right. and that's pretty cool. The smoke photography. Right. But I was thinking. You know, I don't know if this is, I, I knew people would enjoy it, but I thought, I don't know if they're going to really learn that much from it. Well, because I told them I had little, because it was a big class, mm -hmm. so I had little, um, you know, pieces of paper by each station right. telling them what settings to have. Exactly. And everything, and I thought, what are they going to learn when I'm telling them what to do? Well, at the end of the class, I was like, I learned more about shooting in manual and flash photography in this class than I ever did anywhere else. Right. I thought that was so strange because I told them exactly what to do, but when you do, you learn. Exactly. And they were doing, and it made them learn. I think that's a fun, that's a great class. That's what, a how very, fun is very, that? very messy, splashy class, but they have a blast making a big mess. Yeah. And, uh, I, also, I also do the, the, the strobes and the fish tank, and also have still lights, like, you know, regular. Um, like video lights? Video lights for uh, different settings over there. So I get a challenge of capturing with the strobes using the alien bees and the pocket wizards versus window light and studio lights as well, so it's a good variety for them to shoot with. All that, just all within the splash photography? So I rotate them around, yes. I drop and stuff in the you, tank. And what do you, because we just did fruit. It looks like you were dropping all kinds of stuff oh, in there. Oh, cell phones, old flashes, toy cars. Oh, uh, my gosh. Uh, flippers, <laughs> <one> mask. <laughs> we, we, the more messier, it was great, it was fun. There's some <laughs> videos online on my, my, my business page, JMJ Photographic Services. Uh, oh, you get that online, the video? Yeah, some videos. I'm What's your website? Uh, JeremiahJenner.com. Okay. I just uh, I'm going to ask you again at the end. So. Sure, no problem. But I, uh, yeah, my classes are great. It's like a big, um, it's almost like a kiss concert, I said. I have the rock and roll playing, and people are having fun and laughing, very dynamic interchange between the students, and actually learn as well. So I put a little, little creativity, a little more spin than the average you know, photo studio. So I might think a little fun but and exciting. But now how do you teach if there's music playing? I, saw, we, I, do, I do. Okay, good question. There. <laughs> like the first half hour, I have the gear on the table. Here's your camera. Here's the pocket wizard, here's the alien bees, almost like a surgical precision on there. Here's a, put the, the batteries in the pocket wizard, the pocket goes like to the camera, this goes here, you take the reflector and umbrella, and you put it here, here's the sandbag. So I give an actual rundown of technical data first. Uh -huh. I actually taking little notes there, it's kind of cool. Everybody's like, okay, what's the next, what's next? So again, 
good education technical wise. And then we go ahead and here's a tank over here. I write down the settings for them too, like you do, you know, ISO, et cetera, et cetera, and a different table, shooting areas. And then we do a couple of test shots, get them dialed in. Then it's like, okay, like a little line, you're over here, five minutes, go over there, and rotate and then around. Rotate. Yeah. yeah, that's what we did so that like, time so too. They have a lot of fun rotating around. They, they take turns splashing each other, right? You crank up the music. Crank up some Def Leppard <laughs> or Van Halen or some, uh, even some, uh, you know, Journey or Bachman Turner Overdrive. And, uh, you want some disco too. Uh, now you're a musician too, yeah, right? I play drums in a hard rock band, Steel Cobra. And sometimes Steel I sleep. Steel Cobra? That's Steel Cobra. Name. All right. Steel, Steel Cobra. Cobra. This Fort, weekend. And you're based in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, yes. Wow. That's cool. And sometimes I sleep once in a while. Oh my gosh. So that's yeah, a really. very fun, creative life. I'm very blessed to be yeah. you know, such a creative person. Again, you know, I had corporate jobs for years. It didn't really quite fit my schedule of being a creative person on there. So I'm quite happy being myself and working, teaching others to see the light and become more confident as photographers. Yeah, yeah, I love teaching. I, it was funny because I didn't want to start teaching. I thought, I didn't think I was technical enough to be a teacher. Okay. And uh, the, my friend who kind of convinced me to do it was like, well, you know more than they do. Right. <laughs> and then uh, I learned, though. I mean, I, I did have a lot to learn. I mean, I had a lot of experience when I started teaching. I had been a full-time photographer for, I don't know, 12 or 13 years. And uh, I think I didn't give myself enough credit for that, right. all that experience, because a lot of stuff I knew, I didn't really understand why, I just knew. Right. But then, as I started teaching, you start understanding even better and, and learn. I was afraid I was not going to be able to learn all the different cameras and... But then you learn that photography is photography. Right, a camera's you know? a camera. Nikon, yeah. Canon. Yeah. yeah, and they are quirky. I mean, we try to, I try to get the information, like what kind of camera do you have before they come to a class? Same here. Even online, I say, what kind of camera do you have? Because very, very important every once there. in a while they throw you for a loop. <laughs> it's like, especially Sony's or some point and shoots, but it's just about yeah. capturing Olympus light. Is, Olympus guy came to a class one day that threw me off, that yeah. took me a little while to, to get it. And I don't like doing that in a group class. I want to. If it's some it's something I don't know, I want to learn before. Right. You know, it's a little but. prep at time. I, I agree too. I think teaching helps me get stuff in my head, all the technical data. You know, I was a profes professional too, before I started teaching classes, so all the stuff in our heads, when you teach it to people, it sort of makes more sense to yourself as well. Now, what about your Broward classes, though? Those are different than your private right. classes. Those are big right? group classes, anywhere from 10 to 15 people in the class. And that's more of a classroom situation? Broward County Schools, real classroom, real schools, nighttime, six to nine. That's fun. I like to take people who come in kind of green and how to turn the camera on, where's and the so card it's going. A, it's the adult ed is what Adult it education, is? Oh, correct. Okay. Yeah, Broad Community Schools. That's great. Um, they come in, no experience. They're all like little, hey, what do we do, Jeremiah? What do, how's the card going? What's the f-stop again? They're like little, yeah. my little, yeah. my little duckings following me around the campus, you know, and always checking and on And then them. they turn into other customers for you, Eventually, too. Eventually, um, my goal for them is to take no experience. I mean, people come no experience. Eventually, after couple of classes and workshops and levels, you're too late to become professionals. I want to turn them towards, so you want to be a fine art photographer, I'll help you get in art galleries. You want to be a commercial photographer, music photographer, I want to take what's inside their heads and their hearts and their creativity and can and right path towards willing to be, you know, as a professional down the road. Good for you. Once you're a student, you're a student for life in my classes. That's awesome. I'm always here to help you within reasonable hours, you know, send me a text, I'm doing this, I'm, something's wrong with my camera, so I'm always got, you know, got their back. I want to instill confidence in, in, in when they do this stuff too, so I become more at ease with customers too. Now, what classes do you have at the Broward County? Okay, the class list. Is it, it was a long? Was it a long list? <laughs> I, I have it's three calendars to keep track of my stuff. Oh my gosh! This is uh, you know, some way trying to. Hustle so obviously just, you have some kind of beginner, like how yeah. to shoot a manual. Let's or? say yeah, manual classes. The first class is Broward Schools Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, from 6 to 9 p.m. includes three, you know, three field trips, you know, downtown for cityscapes to apply what we learn in class. Oh, that sounds fun. I like to take them instead of being stuck in the classroom all day. We yeah. have to go out on the campus and walk around different locations, and when they're confident with the settings, hopefully after two or three lessons, I take them to downtown or to my photo studio or historic Lauderdale to put, apply what they learn in real life too, which is great. Oh. So you know, I'm learning you know, the manual, f-stop, aperture, ISO, how to control the light actually how to apply it in real life situations too. So that's pretty cool. They, they learn pretty quick there. It's nice. So is that is that is it just one class that's six weeks long uh, or the something? The class is eight weeks long. Eight once weeks? per week, yeah. 
And after eight weeks, we go on to my private classes afterwards, where I could come to my studio for a splash photography. But at Broward County, it's basically one class you teach over and over and yep, over and throughout over the year. just to get them started. Yep. Them Which is my most popular, that four weeks of proficiency that's in great. photography. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I sell. I Definitely. mean, we have other classes, but that's, that's the main one. And you once, you, once you get them in, you're sort of like, hey, come to my studio, show what we're doing over here. I'm doing a splash photography, I'm doing a level two, more Photoshop, a little more creativity. I build my level two classes more artistic, more technical, more spiritual. So tell me about your studio. Because you sent me pictures and I have studio envy now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, I'm very, very lucky and blessed. I actually live in a sailboat bend artist lofts in downtown Fort Lauderdale. And what is sailboat? Sailboat bend, bend artist, artist lofts. Loft. That's okay. a mouthful, yes. These are built by Art Space in Minneapolis. They actually create live workspaces that are affordable to artists like us. Okay. So instead of having to rent a studio with your rent, you know, on top of a home, actually live workspace. You can build your studio, you can build your painting studio, you can build your own music studio. Dance studios there. These are actually. Did you do you buy this place or? Do these you rent? are rented to the county, Broward County Cultural yeah. Division. Again, props to them for actually helping create a space that's affordable to artists, so we're not stressed out. You know, having double rent and double bills the whole time. So you is your studio and your living space Correct. the same in the same building? Yep. How cool is that? Uh, it's really nice. I'm very been there seven years. I got really cool neighbors. We're surrounded by creative, artistic people the whole time. We got now, do painters you, and photographers. Yes. Do you have um, so there are other photographers in there too? Photographers, painters, musicians. Do you have like here? Naples is a very artistic yes. community, and uh, I don't even know how it ha happened, but there's an industrial area here in town in North Naples that turned into like one artist bought a place and then another and then another and so now they have I think it's Wednesday nights they have like an art walk kind of thing. Those are cool. And just from independent, actually they just became a nonprofit organization. I just ran into one of them who lives up there or lives works. I don't, I don't think they can live there though. I think it's just commercial but uh, but they have these art walks every Wednesday or something That's like great. that in season. Do you guys do something like We're that? We're open every third Saturday of the month. There's so you do? Opening the Saturday tomorrow night. I have some new works in the show. And so what, when you say open, is it like, is, it, is there a place to walk around there or what's Actually, it like? Actually, uh, we have 1310 galleries and in between the lofts is a big three-story art gallery, like big modern light windows and high ceilings. And we, every month we showcase different artists there. Each artist has a chance to curate a show in the communal space over there. Oh, okay. And in turn, people, we have open studios, which I'll have tomorrow night, number 307. Uh, people come in our studios. They, they get to see working artists in their environment over there, which is great. They get to see what artists are like, you know, it's almost like being on display and, you know, like a little exhibit for the public that's there. That's cool, like, though, because that's publicity yeah, for you. It does. We have uh, great painters next to me that you know, come and see our places, like painters. They walk down the hallways, the wine in their hand, and Music's so playing there, and they so you're your own little out. art uh, own association, art yeah, that's basically. Great. <laughs> it's very, very great living there. You know, you get surrounded by creativity all the time. You feel the creativity buzzing. That is awesome. Hear people sign or painting or singing or taking pictures. It's really great living there. Now you are a fine art photographer as well yes. as an instructor. And what kind of photography do you do? I primarily specialize in high jewel tones, high end, you no know, pictures like big, you no. Know, prints, you know, 20 by 30 prints, 30 by 40 inch prints, you know, metallics, details. If you go to jeremiahjenner.com, you'll see some of my work over this really. Well, is it sweet. abstract or is it, what, it, what do you mean by? Mm -hmm. Good question. I guess I call it abstract, almost abstract are urbanism. Are pictures of things? You can tell what they are, but it's more detailed. Okay. My newest shot is a shot of a palm tree. It's sort of like half bark and half green, printed on metallic paper from Dale Labs. And it's really cool. And, I take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. Okay. I try and part to my students, take some ordinary shot, maybe a tree, maybe a cloud, maybe a part of a car. And go for the details on there. Make it your photograph. Uh -huh. Make your own style and your now, own voice. When you, when you say that, do you, do you do a lot of Photoshop to it? or? I primarily keep it traditional. Okay. The only time I Photoshop is we're touching clients on and making them you know, look marvelous styling. That's my style. <laughs> but for my fine art, I do a little level, some contrast, maybe a little more saturation and vibrance you know, in the picture. It's a little more pop out of the camera. Okay. Then I print it on metallic paper for really bright colors. I'm well known for my jewel tones, you know, hence the bright colors. I'm really attracted to bright magentas and bright blues and bright yellows and bright greens. That's my signature style in my photography. Now, I think a jewel tones is purple and 
turquoise. Nice, yeah, turquoise, exactly. Yeah, okay. I'm really attracted to like bright, almost like bright um, dragonfly colors, the metallic sheens of stuff. Okay. My work has a particular sheen to it, a particular style that's identifiable. You know, and you said you use a metallic paper. Yeah, from Dale Labs. Which I love that look, really by great the way. Pop but to it's it. not really, you know what's in is the metal, the actual metal prints. Those are great too. But I bought some recently mm -hmm. and they chip pretty easily, I've learned. Yes. And I, I thought, well, maybe it's the lab I used, which is my regular lab. But then you somebody said that's gloves, yeah. pretty much all of them. They chip right. very easily. Very, very gentle. That's, I prefer to use acrylic mounting, which okay. gives a nice, clean, modern edge. If you get a little scratch and scuff, you get a little acrylic polish and polish it out real ah. quick on there. But the metallic paper is mm. actual paper right. with a sheen to it. Yes. I love that look on certain things. Yes. Like on what you're talking about, it sounds like it'd be It has awesome. to be really bright colors for the metallic paper to pop on Yeah, there. I'll show you. I have one in the studio. I'll show you right. after we, after we yeah. finish. Yeah, I have some friends doing the aluminum, but again, they're very such delicate little creatures. Yeah, one little they, scuff and scratch is done. And so then, I, you know, f I don't know if you do, but I mean, I, you know, I guarantee my work. So right. somebody comes back to me and says, hey, this chipped five years later. I've got to buy them a new one. Exactly. You know? I prefer the metallic paper behind the acrylic plexi mount, so it's more secure and more stable. And the advantage of the plexiglass is it directs a lot more light into the photograph, almost like it's backlit sometimes. It's much oh. more ambience, too. It's about the same price as aluminum. Okay. There's many choices out there. And Dale Labs is your... Dale Labs in Hollywood, lab. Florida, yes. Yeah. A little extra plug from my sponsors here. <laughs> I met, uh, I can't remember now, I feel bad because he was at the, at the trade Dale. show at the Florida Camera uh -huh. Club Council trade show or convention that we had here right. in Fort Myers, Florida in March, which we're having again next year. Hopefully they'll be there. What was that Isaac from Southern Photo? Isaac the wasn't there. Right. Uh, you know, I have a relationship with Isaac. At, I don't know if you've ever been on his website. You'll see that I'm one yes. of his um, satellite offices, I guess yeah, you would say. Yeah, off your camera, <laughs> yes. Southern Photo is done. They've been fixing and, uh, fixing and cleaning my cameras for... 18 years, That's great. maybe? I don't know, a long great time. Great people sell them photo technical services. And then they services. come here to Naples to yeah. clean cameras. They're, they are very good people. They take care very. of my students, too, definitely. I, I bought a lot of gear from Isaac and Rocky, and it's been great care the whole time. It's, you know, plus, it's very personable, too, and great service as well. I like yeah. the place. Well, you get to go actually in there. Yeah, it's only a short drive down the road. Well, I haven't been in there since... I used to go back before the photography world changed mm -hmm. so radically. I would say, or anybody would say, one of the professional photographers would say, I'm going over to Southern Photo, take my camera, take my camera. And you'd go over there with like 15 cameras, you know, and drop them off at Southern Photo and then come back, you know, do something in Miami for right. fun and then come back and pick them all back up and all your friends, all the photographers, all the professionals. But now they come, you know, Isaac comes here. That's great. Clean, which is such, such a great so much service easier. for us. Oh my gosh. Or we ship. Right. We ship. To, to He's a great guy to know. He is Definitely. a good guy to know. All right. So now you're talking about you're teaching your students to try to see see something different. Correct. Now, now, what do you mean by that? Like how how if I'm like a totally non-creative person, how am I gonna how am I gonna get that? Well, first. <laughs> Well, the first, the basics, how to use the camera, how to use the f-stop, the ISO, the shutter speed, and combine a shot for the situation on there. So I give them three basic settings, and they'll send you 16, shade 8, and nighttime settings. And again, I want to emphasize my students, these are not set in stone. The camera's going to adjust the whole time for different exposures on there. The idea is get it approximately close enough and get the shot, and maybe go for more details. Say like you see a, a leaf after the rain, go for the raindrops instead of the whole plant, or maybe part of a cloud, maybe part of the car, maybe some, something sparkly, something more different than the average shot. Instead of taking the whole picture, go for the details. Getting closer, zoom in closer, vary perspective, get low or higher shot. Walk around to see the picture to suit you on there. A good example is a shot I did of Vizcaya, the pool over there. I probably waited two hours knowing that the light would come out to sparkle on the water over there too, in a big orange pool, and that's sort of aqua colored water on there. I waited hours and hours and hours and I just knew get the intuition after a while where the light's going to come out for you and 30 seconds the light came out hit the water and sparkled and the, the, the you know the metallic paper and the stuff oh, like too yeah. it's great so it has a nice shine to it as well you got to wait for the light get the shot right look around at the shot and see what makes you happy on there I tell them what makes you happy as a photographer will make me happy as a teacher too so explore the light get your settings right walk around 
find a good angle for you and wait for the light to be just right over there. Now you've had um, some serious collectors and you're in the Smithsonian. That was very fortuitous too. Tell me about that. Um, I'm, I, do, I have a I, I'm always, I have a lot of gusto and zest for my business as a photographer. Boy, that's for sure. You are a very enthusiastic person. <laughs> I'll talk to anybody from the guy scrubbing to Flora could be a collector to, you know, to high-end people at PBS and, you know, right down to Smithsonian. Um, I was interviewed by the press about four years ago, five years ago, you know, uh, Broward Design Magazine. And I wanted to use my picture of uh, Lady Abundance, which is a statue in Stewart. And I, actually, this is back in the film days, shot maybe 10 years ago. And I uh, was downtown Stewart. Lady Abundance is a beautiful statue. She's holding, like, you know, a little very Grecian jar with the grapes and the hair and pouring water out. One time at nighttime, I went to shoot some shots and actually used uh, my car headlights for lights on it for dramatic lighting. Oh, much cool. So I put the car highlights over Must there. Must have been really late because that's a busy area downtown Stewart. I just went there a couple oh, weeks ago for area. my first yeah. time. That's so why I grew Stewart. up in the Treasure Coast in some beach area. But I mean, if you had your car lights shining, yeah, I need a more the light on it. Yeah, night when nobody else was need there. More, need a more pop to it. I never had this print for a long time, and the magazine said we like to put it on the cover of the magazine. Let me know more wow. about it. Wow! And how did they find out about it? Um, I'm good friends with Jordi Lushinsky. She's really with the cultural division now. She's with uh, the different creative companies in Pompano Beach. She's my one of my allies as an artist and a cultural person. Okay. So Jeremiah, some press people to talk to you, Jeremiah. This article over here is coming out. You know, people are coming to talk. She's very, very great to get artists out there as well. And uh, some of her friends contacted me, you know, about doing an article about my photography work and as a teacher. And the picture's on the cover. So, well, Jeremiah, what about this great shot backstory? So I googled it and it popped up in the Smithsonian Institution. And I called the Smithsonian Institution and I say, you know, I know she have an article about the, you know, the statue over there. Would you like to have a copy of my work? I said, sure. So I sent him a copy of the work and my photograph, Abundance, is in the Smithsonian Permanent Collection. So you just called them up like, hey, and said, hey, I've got a picture of this. To go, go with your article online, and yeah. And so how, did you send, send them a print? Sent them a 11 by 14 print in the collection. Wow. Yeah, I'll talk to anyone, like I said. I'm, I'll make phone calls, whatever it takes to, you know, get a little you know, extra traction in the business world as well. But that may, it's, it's, I mean, that's for people who are just yeah. trying to sell their artwork. Yeah. Don't be afraid I to mean, talk you, to anybody. You gave it to them. Right. You donated it. Right. But you donated it, and now you've got something in the Smithsonian. So that makes you more impressive. And That's just a title. But when people are buying art, I mean, why does, why does Peter Lick sell his stuff for millions of dollars? Correct. When I could take that picture, you could take that picture. People say the same thing. We all could take that, and we all have taken those yes. pictures probably. So why is his selling for a million dollars? It's all about, oh, he's, you know, some Create big Create a shot. persona. Mm -hmm. So that's great. That's great. Now, how did you start selling to the big corporations? I kind of started doing it, you know, uh, I had actually a business, Mile High Photo, back in the 90s doing aerial photography. I went knocking on doors back old school. We, uh, Mile High Photo. <laughs> the sky's no longer the limit. This is way back in the film days. And I, I was approached by a pilot said, do you do photography? I have an airplane. So we launched our own business back in the mid-90s, flying around. You know, this is back. We had to make our own flyers by hand and you know, put the glue and stuff on them, so Aww. old school. And I'd go <laughs> knocking on doors. I said, I'll talk to, you know, talk to corporations. You know, we're, do, we're doing aerial photography. We, get, we see you doing uh, some construction work. I actually landed a big contract with St. Lucie West Development Corporation for about five, six years doing aerial shots and ground shots. And okay. clients like, hey, you know, I like your work. Do you do any fine art, some decorations for our office, et cetera, et cetera. So you st slowly build up your business, got knock on the doors, don't be afraid to talk to people. So you started selling to the developer? Yeah. And it was a large Corporation. Like a housing development Yeah, company. I actually built a city, St. Lucie West, out there. Oh, they helped, built a whole city. Oh, yeah, I was grand. <laughs> so I got on the ground floor, no pun intended. I, I, made, I made my first pitch to the client. So if you want to see me, I'm, I'm on the construction site. And I had my shoes on, my loafers, my expensive suit. And he's on this bulldozer, bulldozer, you know, the director, the owner of the whole company. He said, come out here. So I actually made my first sales pitch in about six inches of mud on my, on my dress shoes. Oh, my God, that's so funny. I said, if you come out here and talk to me in your dress shoes in the mud, you know, I'll hire you right there. So it shows I'll do anything to get, to get, to get the job over there. For every thousand no's, you'll get a yes. You have to keep going. No one is going to change. I'll keep you know, tenacity is the highs and the lows of being a photographer. When you get that one yes, capitalize on it, say, 
have a reference for a client? Do you have any more people you might know can benefit from shots, headshots, you know, maybe classes? You gotta network, that's the key. There's a lot of great photographers and artists in the world, but unless you're out there knocking on the doors, talking to people directly, that's how you make a success for yourself on yeah. there. Don't be afraid. Don't people, get rejected. People need to like you as a photographer. Yes, you have to be personable too. Yeah. So now you you make money teaching. Correct. Selling fine art. Yes. But you said you also do event photography. Event photography. And what what do you mean by event photography? So like you know, like a corporate has like you know an award ceremony or some sort of presentation. I document those as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, and you do headshots and headshots. stuff like that too. Headshots in my studio. Okay. On location as well. Okay. I'm actually doing lots of old Capital Arts, who gave me an art show a few months ago, too, in their, in their gallery as well. Great people. So okay. I saw, yeah, networking said, you know, I did an art show for Los Angeles Capital Arts, and they said, you'd like to showcase your work. They came by my studio. I'd like to showcase you as a photographer and attorney. Hey, Jeremiah, we need some headshots for our business. It's all getting out there in the business world and talking to people. And doors will break down for you after a while. You have to be persistent all the time. You have to want it bad enough out there and make it go, go for the drive and make a go of it. So you're very diverse. Correct. As I am in yeah, my company You have now. to be diverse. You when can't I be a one-trick pony. I did. I was a specialist. Right. But I, I, since 2009, when in my world all hell broke loose, mm -hmm. you know, it just when Facebook took off, so it seemed like plus. everybody turned into a photographer. And yeah. it, I mean, it was, it was devastating to almost everybody who was a professional photographer at the time because, as Joe calls it, the race to the bottom, like how cheap <coughs> can we sell our services for? And at that time, I was specializing <coughs> in children's photography, and that business is just gone. I mean, I, right. I know people who make money selling classes to children's photographers, but I don't okay. know any children's photographers who actually make a living at it. And so I diversified like crazy. You have to. Similar to you, selling you know, classes, Correct. teaching, and I started doing event photography. I never did event photography until 2009, and now, I mean, I told you I just finished doing a, a big banking organization, and it was fun. I right. mean, you hang out at the Ritz-Carlton for three days, you know, cool. and they feed you yeah. good food. And nice. <laughs> I like those gigs. <laughs> they get motivational type of speakers, inspirational speakers, because they want the people right. to come back to their convention, so it wasn't all banking stuff. It was really interesting. Here we do a lot of galas too, though. Right, you never know. Galas. You could do an event and someone say, "I need some headshots." Do you do family portraits? Let's go out there and network, yeah. network, family network. Family portraits is what I in the during, not off season so right. much, but during season that's the main that's my main source. Your shots of are great, by the way. I really admire your, your Naples photography. You know, your shots at the beach, the couples, really nice pictures. Thank you. I, I, I admire your work. Oh, I thank you. That's so nice. Too, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like, uh, or sort of like a East Coast, West Coast, almost the equivalent of each other, you know? East Coast, West Coast. <laughs> yin, yin, yang, definitely. That's so funny. But yeah, don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to get out there and network. You have to so get out of your studio. Now, say that I am just finishing up one of your classes, okay. and I... And you're impressed with me. I'm one of your students, and you're like, yeah, this, I look for this, the students, students yeah. Is, this student is going to go far, and I want to be an artist. I want to sell my photography as fine art. What would be the first, like, what would be some steps? I don't know anybody. Oh, Where would is, I go to network? This is great. Yeah, actually. Um, Especially you live in a big city. I'm going to be jealous there because I bet it's easier, although the grass is always greener, too. <laughs> always greener, yes. It comes down to tenacity and getting out there. Actually, getting out where? Where I, do actually, I go? I actually strive for these students who come. I can, actually, I can actually spot in the first class who has that drive and ambition to go somewhere, whether they have the technical skills or the scenic guy. I always like, Something about you, you're going to be successful someday. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I, just wait. I'm gonna, I, I guarantee you. They may have a great shot for a little homework and say, you should print this big. And here's an art show. Here's some contacts, gallery people I know. Try and enter a Broward Art Guild or a Zeddy Art Gallery or Starving Artist Exhibition. Stuff that's reasonable to join. Now, do you have, it sounds to me like you have more than one art association over there? We you got several. Broward, Broward Art Guild, okay, there's Broward Art, art Serve. What, Art Serve? Art, art Serve, yeah. What is that? There's a big art gallery, too. It's been around for a while. Showcases okay. artists, which I just became a member of, and I'm doing some uh, headshots for them. And it's an association, yep. basically? It's really good to join these art groups, Art Serve, Art Galleries, Rosetti. What are, what are some other ones in your area? Uh, there's Rosetti Art Gallery. There's Broward Art Guild. There's uh, Cash does great art shows. at Parker. that? A lady named Cash, like Cher, one name, Cash. Cash, she, like money? Cash. How do you spell that? K-O-S-H. Her name is Kosh, oh, like Cher okay. or Madonna. Uh -huh. 
she actually she gave me, gave, me, gave me my break years ago too in the art scene. She does the Starving Artist Exhibition in July. It's reasonable to join to do a show at the Gallery Six in the Library. So she's like, "Well, you're great, Jeremiah, but you need to try this direction too." So my mentors, I try and get my mentor to mentor my students too as well. Say, oh. take this little shot on your cell phone or your picture, make it big, put it on plexiglass or aluminum, and put it in an art show. I said, guarantee it's going to win. And I'm nine times out of ten, I'm pretty right with the pictures being accepted to shows too. Now, are you a photography judge as well, or no? I've judged shows for a Braga Art Guild okay. and a couple of camera clubs too. So, so you judging. know, it's funny because you, I have similar advice because I yeah. tell them we only have one art association right. here because we're not as big time as you guys over there. Us city slickers. <laughs> but I say join the Naples Art Association. Get your name out there. But they are an association to help artists. Exactly. I mean, they have. Um, they, during season, of course, right. nothing happens off season here on this side of the world. Maybe you have stuff going well, on in July. seven. But not over here. The whole the whole area closes down right. in the summer. But in in the season, they have a once a month art show. They Correct. call it Art in the Park, and it's geared towards the photographers or not photog artists who are just mm -hmm. starting out. So you know, of course, there's a you have to join the Naples Art Association, which is like $75. That's a steal. It's nothing. You right. know, it's to get your very name out cheap. there, it's really reasonable. And then I think the Art in the Park, I don't know how much it costs to, to right. submit your artwork. Mm. I don't think it costs anything, really. Mm. I'm not sure. Right. Other than you have to get your work printed. Of course. And but, framed. Um, That's reasonable. Over the yeah. Period. Actually, don't skimp on the frames, though. Because yeah. there's one of the judges, because I'm one of the judges Don't buy there. cheap frames, people. I'm one of the judges, and there's one lady she judges with me. She is like, look at these frames. This is trash. Man, and she gives them really low scores right. based on the frame. So. The frame <laughs> makes or breaks a photograph. But then Definitely. I think it's only like $100. I mean, it's, it's an effort, though, because yeah. it's a Saturday once a month, and you have to have a tent. Right. So you have to buy, you know, you have... It's going to cost you $1,000 to get started, but $1,000 to start a business, that's not a lot of that's money. That's reasonable, definitely. I mean, people are like, oh, $1,000, but you're talking about starting a business. I mean, it, are you committed or not? You have to Do be in it to win it. Yeah. You, and then you have to be there on Saturday all day, yes. once a month, which is, you know. Right. But for people who want to start part-time, it's a great way to start. Client. And then the same thing, they've got the exhibitions and things like yeah. that. You and have to get out there, exhibit your work. I mean, a lot of great people just all the time, but they want to show their work. And the Art Association here will also tell them about other places to submit that work. Networking is the key. So you'll meet people who can help you. Like you, like you are one of the people. You're one of the helpers over there. When I'm one somebody of the comes people. through your yeah. class, you're gonna say, "Hey, this lady mentored me. Go talk to her. Go, go talk, talk to her. To go her. talk to her. people then over." Then you're gonna right. know her and her. I got and a guy. They'll introduce you to other people. Right. And if you're out there, like you, you said, you have to be out there, and don't be afraid of rejection too. A piece that one is best to show can be not even jurored into next hour show too. I tell my students, they like. I didn't get juried in, but you won last time. So it's always the numbers game out there, too. You gotta keep going and keep going at it to get your break in there. And they'll say, hey, there's an art show over there. Make friends with other artists. They're here to help you as well. They know great resources, too, to help people out. And a good example one of my mentors and great photographer friends, Isaac Allen Sandy, does the shows, as we, like I mentioned earlier, too. He does really big, epic, you know, four, five, four by five foot prints, you know, metallic paper and aluminum, spectacular work. Another, get, getting back to how I got in photography, going way back, sorry, <laughs> back up the truck, beep, 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 beep. I do that too, that's funny. <laughs> this is I great. I beep when I back up. <laughs> so do I. I think of, this is a pretty cool episode over here. Um, Dave Bassinet, back in the, way back in the 90s, he's a really good fine art photographer. He's Dave Bassinet? Bassinet, yes. With a Z? Bazinet, yeah. Okay. He uh, took me under his wing to actually learn how to print in a studio, print in a dark room. Okay. He still has a dark room at his house. It's pretty awesome there. Wow. I go up to sometimes go old school, put the film around, actually print, you know, sort of get back to the tactile why I became a photographer in the first place. So. I hated that. When I was in photography school in the lab, I was like, I am never doing this. I'm sending my stuff to the lab. <laughs> And other people are like, oh, I love that. There's something room. magical of watching you shaking a piece of paper and the developer all of a sudden Not for picture me, appears man. out of I there. I hated it. So I sometimes go back to my roots of my friends, Dave Baz and that we print in his black and white studio near his home. It's great. And Isaac Allen Sandy is a great photographer. And so what's the other? Isaac Allen Sandy. He does big epic works as well. 
And, okay. uh, His yeah. last name is Sandy? Yep. He has three first names or three okay. last names. But his stuff belongs to National Geographic. He's that caliber out there. He's won a lot of awards. So he's a good and friend of mine. Great people, too, to know. And then the network. You know, go out there, make a, make a friend, make a contact with somebody, join the art guilds or art services. Plenty of shows out there to do. You just now get out how, there and do how it. do they put together a portfolio of work? I like to, uh, I do that in my, one of my advanced classes, portfolio review. You need something consistent, nothing no, too jumpy, nothing too weird, nothing too you know, ordinary. Too. You gotta find, like say you go shoot like headshots or maybe beaches or artistic, keep a similar theme on there. When I go through your portfolio, I wanna go, cool, cool, like what is that? So you gotta keep a similar look, maybe eight by 10 prints and a little index cards, little portfolio out there. So I started my work on there as well. Go knock on the doors. I actually knocked on art galleries back 10 years ago to get my space. And then, hey, I'm Jeremiah. I'd like to make an appointment to show you my work. So, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I, uh, I was at a, a um, my parents started a, ch a charity called Providence House Naples. And okay. they had a, for one of the fundraisers, they had a murder mystery at right. somebody's house, which was really fun, by the way. And there was a lady who owns a couple art galleries, one here and one in North Carolina, I think. And I was talking to her, and she goes, oh, yeah, just, you know, just have, because I was talking about different people right. I knew and getting started, and she's like, just have them call me. Right. But she was so open to it. She wants to see, the art gallery owners want to see the different, they cool, do. unique stuff. They want to see something good out there. You have to not be a pain, but, right. you know, to That's that fine line take them too, to right. lunch or, you know, something like that. I always that. make an appointment with the gallery owner. Don't go cold calling sometimes. Oh, they, yeah, because yeah. they're busy. They yeah. don't, and then they might not even be there. Most of the time, they're not even there, I don't think. Generally, they're not, but always make an appointment. Be polite. Thank them. Give them a thank you letter, a little note, a little text. Say, hey, I appreciate the time to look at my work. Will it become, you know, a customer or a business or an art show, you never know where it's going to go. You got to keep networking. You got to have that drive and ambition to make it go. But that's how I find my students have that drive and that little spark, that little creativity. Like, hey, I think you'd really be good, you know, as a event photographer or get the camera gear, get the lights too. I've had people come to my studio, again, referrals. I'd say 80% of my referrals are from former students. You know, I see, a, hey, a friend of mine said you should take your class. I don't know you, but I know he said, Go take Jeremiah's class, awesome teacher over there. And I had a lady, uh, person come in with these uh, you know, expensive strobes and lighting gear. Like, what do I do with this stuff over there? So I took her to class. Here's the, here's the, the alien, you know, F stop. Here's how you put the lights on, the strobes, the reflectors, A to B. And she's out doing her own event photography business now, too. Oh, Which is cool. I, I train my students to also work as a team sometimes to hire me, or I'll hire them for events, too. So I kind of give them that professional level. We work together as a team and make some money and you know get more business that way well too. Oh, that's cool, yeah. You know, like the Tony Robbins is Jeremiah School of Photography fame over here. <laughs> we'll make you a success. <laughs> it's funny though because some of the, the I started a whole new company because of the students. Some of the students that came through here, I mean they were already professional photographers, right. but they were just kind of either just starting out or they weren't formally trained. I'm a big proponent of formal training. I mean, I right. uh, people are like, I'm self-taught. What does that mean? You never took a class? That seems dumb to me, right? right. I mean, of course you took classes. You're not you self-taught. You have to learn somewhere. But uh, I believe in a, more of a systematic way of learning. And some right. of these people have just been kind of, you know, just learning on the internet, learning here, learning there. And so Can't they finally online, come right. to me for like a f more structured Yes. So that they can get fill in those holes, basically. Agreed. But I started a company called Boutique Destination Weddings, well, where like they're that. just like little tiny one-hour weddings that a lot of people come here and get married on a Tuesday, you know, Great. for sunset or something like that. And they don't want to pay a big, you know, they're not going to give you $2,500 for a one-hour wedding usually. So um, I started Boutique Destination Weddings for some of these amazing up-and-coming photographers so they work as subcontractors through exactly. my company and right. and I get the work because I've been around for so long and seem to be a little bit better at marketing than a lot of them because right. they won't do what it takes which true you have to be I have in it a little to win thing it. about the newsletter I'm like you have to have a newsletter and nobody has a newsletter right do you have a newsletter actually I do send that little on my Facebook page <laughs> on there yeah you have to Again, Facebook's, social media is awesome too to make yourself more pronounced in the world. I mean, there's many photographers, because everybody has a digital camera and a printer. But you have to, you know, build a business page. Ask your clients for reviews, most importantly. Ask them, you know, for 
which might give me a rating on my business page. You might on so, Facebook yeah, you get Facebook the reviews? Page. I'd say generally people go to Google first and you pop up and they look at your reviews and your page on there. Oh, Google's a good place to ask for reviews. I yeah. never thought of Google that. Google Plus. I started my Google Plus page too on there. So. I have one, but I haven't looked at it since Google Plus came out, I think. Yeah, <laughs> you have to diversify, definitely. And but it's good to be on Google Plus because then you come up in the search engines. Definitely. A lot but of ways to market yourself. nobody goes on Google Plus, I don't think, ever. Yeah. People want to type up, say, your business or my business pops up, you know, the Facebook page first and your website afterwards, too, which is both. You have to really post on social media at least a couple of times every two to three days like we do on there. you got to keep the traffic driven. There's a lot of photography groups on Facebook to post your business and post other people you have a question to. The photography community as a whole on the East Coast is very supportive of each other. They want Everybody sort of works as a team to succeed. Hey, I, I can't do a shoot. Can you do a shoot for me? Or I have a shoot or vice yeah, versa. Or, it's like that here, too. Yeah, gotta, it didn't gotta, used to be. you got to play nice. It's a it small world out there. It used to be very cutthroat here. Really? And it's changed dramatically. But, but actually, I've trained most of the photographers in the town now who are in business. <laughs> They've all come through me. That's great. <laughs> most of them, anyway. So it always but feels uh, good to see my students being successful in the business world. Oh, a little yeah. bit come. Hey, Jeremiah won Best to Show. I sold a piece to a client. Or Jeremiah, I'm being published in a magazine. Like my student, uh, Jose, took a couple of classes with me, you know, up, up to level four. He actually got published in a design magazine. Really proud of him. Another student uh, became a food photographer. Took my class. Said, I got. I bought a new Canon camera. I want to do for food photography. First, first class. So I said, "Well, come by. I will do some private lessons over how to use the bounce cards and reflectors and set the camera up." Now she's working for a couple of home and garden type you know, stuff shoots for doing food photography too. So awesome. that's great. My students come in a little. Uh, how do you turn the camera on, Jeremiah? Where, yeah. Where's the card going? And here? then you see them as working. All of a sudden, they, they pop. Years later, they pop up. You know. And famous you know, accolades and press like that too. I'm really happy when they become success. My student's success is my success as an instructor. Oh, okay. I want to become, you know, like little Jeremiah's, I guess, my little you know, minions out there in the world become successful and they could take people and maybe train them or, you know, become, give them pointers too. A good example, one of my students, you know, I taught a thing of abstract where you actually twist the lens called pepper grinder for abstract effect and low shutter speed. Okay. She was over in uh, Sweden and she's like, what are you doing over there? So she taught my pepper grinder effect to people in Sweden to make the little twisty effect in the camera too. So she's teaching people, you know, halfway across the world, uh, some stuff she taught in my class too. Oh, that's good. That's so awesome. It's always good my, my give my little in insight to perspective, make yourself different, different angle, perspective, and they actually sort of, hey, try this little trick Jeremiah taught me over there too. So it's great. I enjoy you know, being an instructor, watch people become successful yeah. in their own right, whatever aspect you want to pursue down there as well. Um, speaking of great photographers, uh, my girlfriend Irene Terra is awesome. She's an art teacher from Miami Dade Schools. Okay. Nice having a partner crime to shoot with, you know, go out, you know, get yeah. ideas, yeah. I always say, hey, if you, if you, like locally, of course, we've got an incredible camera club here. Yeah. In fact, my, my guest last week was the guy who started that camera club, Diffie Sig. It's called, which is Digital Photography Imaging Special Interest Group. It stands for Diffie Sig. Okay. But uh, if you if you don't belong to a camera club, at Those least great find too, yes. somebody you know to work with and network. To not to network, but to go and shoot with. Bounce ideas off of. Just to the go creativity. and shoot. Yes. You know, just go shoot, and you're going to learn from other people being around. If you're Always. by yourself all the time, you're not going to stretch as much. Right. I think that's Talk my. My belief. Talk to other photographers too. Like I said, shoot with different people, different groups out there. As we have a shoot Miami, you know, a couple. What's that? Of, that's like a, a big group in Long Miami. The photographers. Just people get together and yeah. shoot. So it's uh, a camera, like a camera club. Meetup too. A lot of groups are meetup too. Yeah. I have my meetup group as well for diversification. I do you know advertise classes. So a lot of groups out there. There's no, more than one source to learn. Yeah. Find some. Maybe your best friend might be a photographer. Go out shoot with him or her and get some ideas going too. Yeah. So I, I gotta keep the ideas and fresh and creativity over there too. My students inspire me. Have some great shots. I see that's a cool shot. Do you mind if I sort of get my two cents on that one too? So I'm always looking through their eyes for keep my my perspective fresh as a photographer. Oh, I have like envy half the time because we'll go in a shoot a bunch of people and then I'll come back and we all share the pictures. I'm like, oh, damn, I didn't see that picture. Man, I was standing right there. But the next time. Keeps I'm more head. aware. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Become aware of your surroundings over there. That's funny. So now, um, all right, so the teaching is one thing, the fine art photography. So what if, you know, do you have like ten, some top tips to get into 
fine art photography? Obviously, you said networking is the most important one. Knock on the doors. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Have a good portfolio, maybe 10, 15, 20 images in a nice little presentation book. Don't be all sloppy and sort of, hey, and give them a stack of paper over there. Make an appointment with the, the, the gallery or the person. Uh, go on social media. Look for art groups. You know, don't be afraid to talk to people. You can always refer back to me, too, jeremiahjenner.com. If you have any questions as well, um, show yeah. your work. Do you sell your work online at all, like Fine Art America or any of that? Fine not, Art America got bought out, didn't they? Uh, not, oh, not too much. People want to see stuff in person. It's hard to really judge on like a little screen over there. It's a lot harder to sell your photography online than it is. Yeah, generally I put in art shows. I have like little demonstration pieces. I say, well, I want a bigger shot or a smaller shot too. And always, sometimes you know, put a piece in an art show. Maybe they're they might bigger print, smaller print. Maybe something different, something similar. So you talk to your client. Treat your client like your best friend. You have a client for life. Ask what, ask what they want for their place too. Don't try and sell something that you want. Ask what they want. What do you see in your place? What do you see in your office? What would you like me to capture for you? Maybe something brand new as well. So always be considerate of the client or the person or the, or the art now, gallery as well. Now, if you, let's say that you have your work in a gallery and you have several pieces in a gallery. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have five, five wall, wall hangings in a gallery. How now do you do that? Well, they probably have some kind of opening, and that's oh, how you meet the customers. Schmooze, schmooze, schmooze. And that's when you can go into saying all all the stuff you just said about like you know what what do you say, what would you ask a potential customer? You see somebody admiring your artwork, and what do you say? I'll say what do you what do you like most about that picture? What what, what intrigues you? What pulls you in? Mm -hmm. Sort of get in their mind a little bit, you know. What do you like particular color or the style of it? And like, yeah, I can see and sometimes you step back, you don't jump in and say, hey, I'm trying to sell my piece here. I need to, uh -huh, you know, you got uh -huh. to play it cool with the clients or the collectors or maybe somebody. Like, well, I'm looking for something from my condo or maybe something for my office over there. What more stuff do you have? You got to play it very, very quiet. It's almost like, um, you know, sort of stalking deer. Uh -huh. You got to sneak up on him. You, know, you just can't go and freak him out. <laughs> <laughs> Which some people say they go to hard sell. You got to be, dial it down a little bit and then you say well here's so my card. So you try to find out what they like about your artwork mm -hmm. and what they want to do with the artwork? Exactly. Where do you see your artwork at, you know? Oh, where do you see it hanging or yeah. something like that? Or, or maybe your office, maybe what you're looking for over here. You got you know, give them... Do you ask about the style of their their office or does that matter? That matters too. Sometimes I may reframe a piece to suit their style. Oh. You know, I want something maybe a little more ornate, something a little more sleek and modern. Can you, can you do this so I can do this on plexiglass too for a more, like mine has got the cool edgy urban style. Uh -huh. My plexiglass pieces sell really well, the, the clean modern look to them. Say, well, I need something a little more modern for my white super cool condo on the 80th floor down here. So I, so I also offer my work on plexiglass and I bring them to my studio. I show them the plexiglass look versus the glass look too. So I give them a variety of choices to work with as well. And they say, I like that piece. Can you make it this big and this way too? So you have to sort of cater to the client and see what's in their head and what they want to have for, you know, in their business as well. And sometimes they'll say, well, I like your piece. Can you do some family portraits for us too? Or can you maybe do a, a shot of a restaurant? Like uh -huh. I shot the chimney house, they, you know, through referrals as well on there too. Uh -huh. So you get all about, you know, get your foot in the door, talk to the person, network with them, say, well, how can I make you happy? What would you like for your final product and stuff like that too? So that's uh -huh. how you become successful. Knock on those doors. <laughs> Don't be afraid to take no. And sometimes they may not want to buy, but might buy later too. Sometimes they buy on the spot right there, which getting a point to have that little credit card swipe with a square swiper or a PayPal, never miss a sale that way too. Be, be ready. You gotta be ready. Take this, your credit card right now. <laughs> I don't have the cash, but well, I take credit cards. I say great too. So you never know. You don't want to miss a sale over not having taken the cash or, you know. Or, yeah, you know, well, not too. many people, I mean, I. I never have any cash. Right. I, I, everything's on a credit card for me. So always be ready for the client to maybe make a sale. Sometimes you got to give them some time to think about it. Say, you know, I can show you different looks over here. Come to my studio. And here's what I can do for you as well on there. All right. Now, if somebody doesn't have a studio, though, that can't be a... Our online portfolio is good, too. Get your name registered at jeremiah.com or maybe even a Facebook page is kind of priority, too. Showcase maybe 20 good shots on your Facebook page or your Twitter page or Instagram page to people who want to see your work. And then say, we can make an appointment at Starbucks. I'll share my portfolio in person as well. Or come to their home. Come to your home, yeah. 
I mean, Definitely. that might even be better because then you can get the chance to see what their artwork yes. looks like and their home looks like or office, I've wherever done that before, they're going to be yeah. hanging the... Can I make an appointment to come to your, your home or studio and get an idea of what you're looking for and say, maybe this piece will look great in your wall over here and, and this frame, too. Yeah, yeah. You have to you know, cater to their, their whims and their desires. You yeah, know, I mean, see. if you're talking about somebody who's collecting art and spending a lot of money, which brings me to how do you price your stuff? That is so That's a big question for a everybody. A lot of people ask me, Jeremiah, I got great work. What do I price it as? Again, I'm sure the market's different. self thought is kind of a little higher end, too, you know. Generally, I take my cost and maybe, say, spend, you know, 100 bucks. Maybe you want to do four or five times the cost. You got money in your equipment. Money. Oh, I know. Yeah, a lot of money. There's a lot of overhead that people don't, they don't, they don't when they're doing, like, coming up with the business of being an artist, they don't think about all the overhead. No, overhead kills you. Right there. five you times is what I always right. learned. Minimum five times. Say you got, you know, your, your equipment, your time, gas, your insurance, your, the classes you took. Yeah. Time printing, going to the lab, going to the framers. People think it's just, well, I'm going to print out a piece of work and put it and on the wall. And if you put it in a decent frame, it's like you said, it's going to cost you $100. Minimum so 100 yeah. That's like for a small 16 by 20. Yeah, so $200 is not, no, is not a good price. At least four or five times the amount of what you spent on it, okay. minimum on there, too, to cover your costs. That's, I think that's good. That's the advice I always heard five times, yeah, is what I always yeah, heard. Getting, so. all, the, all the overhead resources, you're driving around to the photo lab, you're driving to this and place. And the time it took you to learn how to do it. The time to go out in the shot, wait for the light to be right, too. It takes, it takes time and effort yeah. and a lot of cost to make the shot, too. Yeah. So minimum five times. And it's not just times. about that one shot. I mean, it took you maybe 100 shots until you got that, that shot. One out of 100 shots, yes. 100 shots in different days, different times, different lighting, different whatever. Locations, so you correct. Got it right. So, and then yeah. you got to take that shot, do you know, editing on it, size it up to customer size, how big it should be on there. Then you got to print it, frame it, drive around, install it. So yeah, it takes a lot of time. And the time it takes to sell it too. That's time too. I mean, salespeople make big commissions because correct. It's time consuming, and you got to and you time know is what? money. I think your advice about being thick skin is good too because we're our art is so personal it is and it's hard to be you know no i don't like that or something like what you know i spent all this you know energy right. and thought it was my best work and somebody might not like it it's very it's subjective right taste. yeah I mean, art's very subjective too personally it's so true yeah, that's for sure. Boy, oh boy, do we ever know that. So what's coming up for Jeremiah Jenner? Oh, wow. Let's see. It's an open studios at 1310 Gallery, a big show on the three-story art gallery. 13 and when is that? Tomorrow night from 6 to 10 p.m. And tomorrow night is June 17th. Yep. Are we third? 17, because remember, this is going to be on YouTube <laughs> late. It's going to be on for next year, you know. Every uh, third Saturday of the month, open studios and art gallery show at 1310 Gallery, known as Sailboat by the Artist Lofts. Sailboat? Bend and artist, artist loss. That's right cool. in downtown. That's I like pretty the cool. Name too. Yeah, we live in Sailboat Bend, a historic area, of Lauderdale, right uh -huh. near downtown. You can see downtown from the third floor. It's kind of awesome. That is cool. Great people over there too. Also, I have some workshops coming up. Uh, JeremiahJenner.com. I'm working on some portrait classes. Broward County Community Schools always goes years round. BrowardCommunitySchools.com. On there, sign up for classes. I just started eight week course. Every eight weeks, we refresh through over there too. Okay. A lot of stuff going on in Jerome Island. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> I really, uh, it's great there. And your website again is? JeremiahJenner.com. Now, we are going to have Jeremiah's website link and lots of the links that we talked about in today's show in the show notes on understandphotography.com. And while you're there on our website, scroll down. At the bottom of every page, you, there, we have a free download. It's called Essential Preparation Tips for travel photography and Joe Fitzpatrick to put that together it's really it's really a good guide for when you're traveling and a lot of people are traveling this summer that's for sure and remember our motto at understand photography is we simplify the technical so tune in here next week on the understand photography Facebook page live if you want to watch the show live it's at 4 p.m. Eastern daylight time um, or Remember, just go onto our website, understandphotography.com, and we'll have links to the YouTube um, videos and to iTunes and everything like that. So I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching episode 41 of the Understand Photography Show. We'll see you all next week. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's an honor to talk to you, and I appreciate it for the time. Thank you. Thanks. That was great. And we're going to go out and shoot now, right? Yes. <laughs>